to Sir Richard, he said, It is God who invited us to his party. Therefore, we must let him position us where he wants us to be. In another story, we have Apostle Joshua Selman who is talking about becoming a voice. According to him, to become a voice means that you are able to influence a generation with your thoughts, convictions, and values. But there are certain requirements you must meet in order to become a voice. What are those requirements? Let us hear from our reporter. You must hearken to the voice of God to become a voice. The words of Apostle Joshua Selman doing his sermon titled Becoming a Voice. Here, the man of God talked about a voice as a powerful tool that can impact generations and do great exploits. Going by his words, becoming a voice means that you are able to make maximum impact on a generation through your thoughts, convictions, and values. Becoming a voice. The scribes and the Pharisees came to John, the prophet who we call the Baptist, and they began to inquire of him, who are you? Are you one of the prophets? Are you the Messiah? And he said, no. They said, who then are you? And he made a very interesting statement. He said, I am the voice of one who is crying in the wilderness. Repent, he says, and make straight the path of the Lord. It is possible for an individual to become a voice as far as the purposes of God are concerned within a generation. A very interesting scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. God intends for many and if possible, everyone to become a voice, but the few that are chosen are not just chosen by God's predetermined counsel. They are also chosen by the degree of their compliance to the terms that make for an excelling life generationally. To be a voice means that you are able to influence a generation with your thoughts, your convictions, and your values. So if God is able to honor you and you are able to influence your generation, it is safe to call you a voice there are many people who are called voices deuteronomy chapter 28 please and verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i commanded this day what is the blessing that the lord thy god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth then verse 2 all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord so you see that you have to hearken to his voice to become a voice jesus christ hearkened to the voice of the father and then the father said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and in one of the renditions he said hear ye him the world will not hear you when you don't hear god in continuation apostle selman discussed three requirements that must be met to become a voice firstly to become a voice you must know god what is the first requirement to being a voice you must know god you cannot become a voice in any generation especially today's world without a functional knowledge of god those who make impact and become voices in their generations are not just those who say alone but they are those who say and do acts chapter 8 from verse 5 the bible says philip went down to samaria and there he preached christ unto them and then verse 6 says that the people with one accord gave heed to those things which philip spake hearing and seeing that is the true character of kingdom impact hearing and seeing so you tell us god is good and show us god is good you tell us god heals and show us god heals if the communication of the gospel from you is only teaching and there is no doing it means that something is wrong john 17 and verse 3 and this is life eternal that they might know thee 
the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent the pride of the believer is not just in the acquisition of things or mundane achievements as important as they may look the real pride of the believer is in the knowledge of God the end time ministry would demand the proper functional knowledge of God because we are going to be standing against things and people and systems and structures that are vocally antichrist the social media never in any church age do we have a platform that has more power than even people and governments are we together that the social media has the power to dethrone even a sitting president that is how powerful it is that means if the social media says jesus is not lord that is a battle that will take only god to fight and it is saying it everywhere and our children are embracing that philosophy and building their destinies on the fact that jesus is just one of the many options we need to know god we cannot present a god that we are still confused about the level of evidence that the world needs to bow to the lordship of christ is greater than the evidences they would have needed 30 years ago 30 years ago if you came with a message and said jesus is lord even if people did not believe him they would believe you and submit to you in total loyalty but today you say jesus is lord your child will ask you to prove it can he do for me what my app will do for me when we started with god there were many privileges we did not have so it was easy to depend on the holy spirit now technology can safely replace a major part of his ministry why do you tell me to submit to the holy spirit because he can wake you what do i need that for when i can program my entire life in an app the app can know me even more than myself the app can tell me when i'm tired the app can tell me when i need to sleep the app can tell me when to go to my doctor it matters that we know god secondly you must be transformed to become a voice number two you must be transformed there is a desperate need for transformation there is a way you present jesus that even those close to you will reject him there is a skill to presenting jesus it's not just truthfulness your gospel can be true but your approach can make it look like a lie look very carefully there are certain details that are captured in this singular verse number one he tells you what to do go ye so it is an action word you should not be passive go ye means be strategic go ye means be intentional number two he tells you where to go to notice he never said go around the world into all the world so it means that your gospel must be more than moving from house to house he says into the world enter the system that there must be an advocacy for christ across every strata of human activities and then he tells you what to do preach to preach means to declare to preach means to preserve as true and he tells you your audience every creature but the only thing missing in this scripture is he does not tell you how to do it the how was left flexible because he knew the times would change the message remains the same the audience remains the same the command remains the same but the strategy and the approach must be flexible and must be predefined per generation even satan has metamorphosed into several things the way satan worked 100 years ago is not the same way he works now he has taken advantage of the fluidity of time and he's evolved himself we must sustain superior belief systems transformation in the kingdom is a product of exposure not negative exposure the principal tool for the believers exposure is not travel around the world that can give you a secular exposure and that is important but the principal tool for the believers exposure and orientation is the scripture romans chapter 12 verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world the thinking pattern that comes with this age it says but be ye transformed how 
by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus that means jesus did not just defeat sin satan hell and the grave just because he was the son of god there was an orientation that he sustained how do you know you are transformed when it becomes difficult to connect you to any earthly territory i shouldn't just look at you and say you are behaving like a northern something about your orientation is betraying you i'm not talking about refusing your people or denying them don't don't misunderstand me are we together i should see you and not even know are you Igbo? are you hausa are you yoruba because of the excellency of your transformation you have defeated the limitation that comes with your territory you want to become a voice you must be transformed provided it does not lead to the compromise of your faith and the compromise of the message you must have flexibility believing that the whole world will be like you think like you and act only based on the limited scope of your culture will limit the advancement of the gospel there are things personally they may compromise on your personal values but then you must sustain the flexibility to still have that sense of accommodation no wonder jesus stood at the well with a woman do you know that was a risk even to his ministry what if he was caught and put on facebook what are you doing this known woman now please don't get me wrong i'm not endorsing licentiousness please don't let's not confuse what we're dealing with here but we're saying there is a level of rigidity that has to be taken out otherwise end time ministry will not be effective do you know what it means to be a sheep among wolves every time a wolf sees a sheep they don't discuss it will eat it that means there has to be a formation that sheep has to be able to present itself in a way for its own safety first before impact lastly the man of god said you must be extremely valuable to become a voice you know you are valuable based on the degree to which men are placing demand on you he noted the third requirement is you must be extremely valuable proverbs 18 16 he says a man's gift replace the word gift with the word value a man's value make it room for him is that in your bible and bring it him before great men can i tell you you know you are valuable to the degree to which men are placing a demand on you a generation will not listen to you until you truly have something to say or something to offer mark chapter 1 from verse 35 the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed 36 and simon and they that were with him did what followed after him there will always be followership for he or she who is valuable verse 37 and when they had found him they said unto him all men how many men man of god this can be true in your life if you are valuable politician this can be true in your life businessman this can be true in your life all men seek for thee people will not just come to listen to you until you have what to say for where the carcasses are did your bible not say that there the eagles will gather man of god be valuable intellectually valuable spiritually valuable carry content carry grace carry intelligence deliver with excellence and no bias no prejudice whether tribal whether religious will successfully be able to trap you down men will not come to an unrefined you men will not come to a potential you they come to a you who has done his assignment man of god don't go around saying god called me the fact that you have to say it is proof that something is not speaking if you want to be valuable be careful so that you don't clap for yourself too early you are a tailor here do not stop until you sow for kings you are a builder here do not stop until you build for kings you may have heard me say it time and again how do you know you are valuable when you find yourself in the palace 
until you have gotten to the palace you are not yet there because until you serve kings you cannot receive the reward of kings gmbc news